Good evening, church. Uh, it's so exciting, again, that we get to pray together in this week across our city. For those of you at home, um, I want to start tonight by looking at a few verses just to set a platform for our prayer tonight. So if you have your Bible, uh, let's uh, page through some of the scriptures. We're going to start at Matthew 7, verse 7 to 8. And Jesus says this. He says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. How encouraging is this verse? That Jesus says that we get to ask God for things. We get to ask God to do things, for God to act, for God to perform His wonders and His goodness. Um, we get this permission. We're asked to ask God for these things. God who has all power, God who has all authority, we get to speak and we get to engage and we get to ask of Him. That's a privilege and that's an incredible opportunity that we're going to use tonight. We don't need to beg. We don't need to plead. We don't even need to try and convince God of what we think is good. Jesus says, ask. Ask God and He will do incredible things. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to ask God. In Matthew 21, verse 22, Jesus says, Whatever you ask in prayer, again, is that word ask? You will receive if you have faith. So tonight we want to ask with faith. We want to come before God with trust and with hope, with our belief in Him and in His promises. And if you're struggling with faith tonight, well, start there and say, Lord, I need faith. Ask God for faith so we can pray with faith, so that we could ask with faith. And so we're going to pray tonight, we're going to ask God, and we're going to try and ask with faith. Hope and trust in Him. And then Matthew 6 verse 8 Jesus says, do not be like them, those who pray these long-winded, drawn-out, attention-driven prayers. But he says, your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. How cool is that? God says, I already know what you need before you're going to ask. So He says, ask me, but I know what you need before you ask. Well, why do we still ask? Well, because He wants us to rely on Him, to show our, our dependence on God, our humility and our need of Him, and our relationship with Him, that we get to come before a good authority, uh, all authority, holding a powerful God. And he says, ask of me so I can do good things with you. So we get to do that tonight. I'm excited for what we get to pray into tonight. We're going to pray into some of these scriptures. But we're going to begin by getting our perspective right. We want to to remind ourselves just how good God is. We want to sing. We're going to sing of His glory, of His wonder, of His majesty. And um, when we remind ourselves of this God who we get to pray to, of who we get to ask to, we're then going to ask some things of Him. So let's sing. Stop the Lord Almighty. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Oh, every knee will bow before Him So open up the gates Make way before the King of Kings Our God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the light, the light of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is 
to live The lamb that was slain For the sin of the world His blood breaks the chains Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb Oh, every knee will bow before Him Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is alive, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is alive. For the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before Him. Bow before Him. Bow before Him. Bow before Him. I'll be for you, I'll be for you, before you, Lord.
hoping that after you've sung, your, your, your faith is stirred, your uh, belief of who you're praying to is built up, we get to ask that God that we just sang about, our Jesus, our Savior. We're going to ask Him some cool things right now. So the first point, we're going to look at Luke 11, verse 13. And Jesus says this, He says, if then, who, if then you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Again, okay, there's that phrase. We get to ask Him. We get to ask Him for the Holy Spirit. In Matthew, that uh, uh, verse says that we get to ask and God will give us good gifts. But here in Luke, the emphasis is that He would give us the Holy Spirit. So we're going to ask for Him. We're going to ask for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, I won't leave you as orphans, but I'll give you the Spirit. In Acts 1 verse 8, it says, you'll receive power when the Spirit comes on you to be witnesses. And so we're going to ask the Father, our good Father, but He says we should ask Him for the Holy Spirit in our lives, for the Holy Spirit to lead us, for the Holy Spirit to guide us, to fill us and anoint us, to empower us, uh, to use us and to help us grow. We're going to ask for Him. And then we're going to ask the Father for the good gifts that Matthew refers to. Those good gifts, God, that you know that we need. So we're going to pray. Lord, help us to receive your Holy Spirit. If you've not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I want you to pray and ask. Because the Father says, ask. And I want to give him to you. We're going to ask for the Spirit. We're going to ask that he would lead us as Galatians 5 unpacks it so wonderfully. We're going to ask for the fruit of the Spirit that we continually need to grow and mature in our lives. We're going to ask for the gifts of the Spirit. And what God's called us to do, to show God's signs and wonders and just to speak into people's lives. And then we're going to ask for the good gifts that God wants to give for every area of our lives. And we need that for our family. We need it within our work. We need it within our community. God wants to give us what we need to do that which He's called us to do. And part of that is asking, Lord, give us your Holy Spirit to lead us, mature us, and use us. So let's pray into this point. Go for it.
All right, our next point is we're going to go uh, to the book of James. James chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. And in there, James says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. There's that phrase again. Ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. We are told to ask for wisdom. In fact, it's a command. It says, if you lack wisdom, ask for it. But then ask for it with faith and belief that God's going to give you the wisdom that you need so that we're not being tossed about in uncertainty and insecurity and not knowing what lies ahead. God says, I want you to be uh, built on a strong foundation, sure and full of knowledge and wisdom of what we are called to do need to do. And if you feel like you're lacking that wisdom, God says, well, ask me. Ask me because he wants to give. So we're going to do that tonight. We're going to ask for wisdom. I want you to pray for wisdom for yourself. Ask God, what is God asking you to be doing right now in this season? There's so many people doing so many things, but what's God asking you to be doing? Again, within your family, at home, uh, at work, within community and friends, how is God asking you to respond? What is God asking you to do? Ask God to give you that wisdom that you can respond to it. But then ask God for wisdom for the church. We definitely are constantly asking God to keep leading us. God, lead us prophetically. Lead us the way forward that we need to go. That we're not trying to mimic what the world is doing or what other churches perhaps are doing. But God, what are you asking us? Cornerstone Church, our nine sites across the city. What are you asking us to do? Give us wisdom. Speak into these situations, Lord. Lead us as leaders. Lead Marcus and Adele as they lead this team, as they lead these, these, these sites. Give us wisdom, Lord, for what you're calling us to do, that we would respond in obedience. And then let's also ask for wisdom for our government. They've got big decisions continually to make, and sometimes you might not like them. Sometimes they're in our favor, sometimes they're not. But we want to ask God, give our government wisdom, and that ultimately whatever they decide, God's kingdom, without doubt, will continue to advance. That God would uh, give them what they need, the decisions to be made to ensure God's kingdom will advance. Let's ask God for wisdom. And as you ask, let's ask with faith. Let's pray.
We're on our third point now. We're going to go back to, to Matthew. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 to 38. Jesus says this. He said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. So, so strong on our heart, and it's been strong on our heart since this church has, has, has been in existence, but right now as well, strong on our heart is our need to seek and save those who don't know Jesus, that harvest that is plentiful, that we are called to be the workers and the laborers. And uh, Jesus says we must ask for the laborers, ask for them to be prepared, to be readied, to be sent. So we're going to do that. We're going to ask it of ourselves. We're going to ask it of our church and the church worldwide. Lord, prepare the harvest. But then, Lord, prepare the laborers who can go and reach those who need to hear this good, good gospel. So let's pray into these points. Let's ask that we will have an opportunity to reach the lost. We'd meet these people. There'd be opportunities and conversation to share the gospel with them. God, make those moments happen. Give us, again, that wisdom to speak into situations with the gospel, to share the gospel. Let's ask that the people God is drawing to himself will find ways of coming to church or find ways of meeting with Christians and to ask those questions as they're seeking, as God's drawing them to him. Let's pray that those people find a way of hearing the gospel. And then let's pray for our heart for this. We, we, we need to have this on our heart. We need to not do it out of obligation, but out of love and desire. Out of, Lord, this is, this is a beautiful thing you've called us to, to go and share good news with people who need to hear this good, good news. So let's pray that God would put this on our hearts, that we would seek people, we'd pray for people, we'd find opportunities to share with people. Let's pray for the harvest, let's pray for the laborers. Let's pray.
Right, our final prayer point tonight, we're still in the book of Matthew. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 to 20. Jesus says, again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it'll be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Again, there's that when, when people come together and ask together, uh, God will do things. God will give. God will, God will do what He wants to do. And God is amongst us. He's there with us. So this verse speaks a lot about unity. And I just want to end for us as a church to pray for unity. Pray for our people. Uh, there are people across the city who have been alone for seven months and are slowly trickling back in. But we want to pray that people come back into our community uh, find the friends that they've got, find people to walk with, to be accountable to, to, to journey with. We want to pray that we get to come together, to pray together, to do life together, to journey together, to act and, and serve God together. So let's pray. Let's pray for people on the fringe. Let's pray for people that they would plug back into community, that they won't be alone. People who've got comfortable being alone, that's not what, what God desires. God says He wants unity. He wants us to come together. Let's pray for people who are on the fringe to come back to church, back into our community. Let's pray for us as a church to be united in what we do, in our action, in our decisions, in our way moving forward as a church. And then let's pray that people would find value again in being together as church, coming together for, for prayer, uh, for uh, our church meetings on Sundays, for our life groups. I find value in life groups, coming together, being together, and doing life together. If we don't find the value in it, we won't give our time to it. But if we find and remind ourselves of the value of all of these things that we get to do together, we get to see the fruit of it and we get to uh, receive what God says, that His blessing and Him being among us. We want to be together in what God's called us to. So let's pray into this unity. Go for it.
Thank you so much for joining us online with prayer. Um, it's always encouraging. And the encouragement is always, don't let prayer be only a Wednesday night event. But let's keep praying into these points in the week. Uh, even, even people that we haven't mentioned or things we haven't mentioned, pray into them. And feel free to share with us at the church any words of encouragement you felt during this prayer time. Uh, but really good to, to join you. And um, look forward across our site seeing you on Sunday as we get to serve our incredible God and King always calling us to. So have a very good evening. Uh, see you soon.